Welcome back to our live training session. We're gonna be taking a look in this tutorial at how to dial in our high cam or VTEC operation using our Mtron on a Honda K-Series engine. So let's jump in here and talk about what we have going on in our calibration file and what we need to do to prep our fuel and ignition timing tables for the switch over into VTEC operation. So moving into the laptop screen right now, I have the vehicle connected to the Mtron, so we're in the online state, and we're gonna find we have our main V table here up on our screen. The main V table is something we've worked out and we've dialed in with this alpha end strategy in our previous train tutorials. So we know that at idle, part throttle, and wide open throttle, the VE values here represent accurate airflow estimation, and we have our air and fuel modeling worked out so that we're requesting a certain target lambda and we're hitting that desired target lambda with minimal closed loop correction. So what we can know from this point forward is that we have a basis for the non-VTEC airflow representation, but when we turn on VTEC, we're gonna have a completely different amount of airflow coming into the engine. We have a higher lift and higher duration profile on that VTEC cam, so as a result, our two VE tables will be distinctive and unique for low and high cam operation, and that's how we've set up our Mtron, using a VE table one and a VE table two. We can see that noted right here, so VE table one, VE table two. So looking at this, we switch between these two tables based on the VTEC activation. Now we have this set up here based on our Z axes to switch between the two tables. Looking at our fuel main table Z axis setup, we're gonna find that the cam switch status, that's gonna be either a zero or one VTEC off, zero VTEC on one. We've designated at cam status zero, we use table one, cam status one VTEC on, we use table two. So it switches between those seamlessly when we are activating our cam switching status, which is going to be our VTEC activation. So if we move back up in here to our main V table one, we can find here that we look at our main V table two, it's gonna be a mirror of our VE table one. Now we need to do that in order to have something populated as a starting point. However, we are gonna find we have to pay attention to our axes within our main V table two. The VE table two here is gonna be when we're in VTEC. We're gonna be revving the engine higher than when we were on our low cam table, our VE table one. So we need to go and pay attention to what our breakpoints are going to be in this table. This table is going from zero all the way out to 8,000 RPM. Now I'm not gonna engage VTEC lower than 3,000 RPM. So technically speaking, I could have my breakpoints start in this table at 2,500, and then I can carry that all the way out to higher RPM, something like 9,000. I don't anticipate revving the engine above about 85, 8,600 with these stock cams, I could if I'd wanted to, but I wanna make sure that I'm having my breakpoints in my table being able to account for that. We need to do some shuffling around in our breakpoint values here for our table. Let's click A and take a look at this. I'm gonna delete my breakpoints here at zero, 500, 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 RPM. They're not gonna be useful because we are not going to bring VTEC in that low. I'm gonna set breakpoints here a little bit higher and going in 500 RPM increments. So 8,000, 8,500, 9,000 RPM. We'll click OK here and click Yes. Now we can see the table is going to repopulate itself. Now what we need to do from here is copy the VE table value, V table one values into the VE table two, specifically between 25 and 8,000. That's what we know we have breakpoint resolution in our low cam table. We can carry that forward into the high cam table and use that as a starting point for the adjustments in terms of the airflow representation that we're gonna be dialing and tuning for working in VTEC. Let me demonstrate that real quick. So we're gonna flip back in here to the V table one. I'm gonna go here from 2,500 all the way out to 8,000 and I'm going to copy. I'm gonna move back in here to my V table two, going from 25 to 8,000, I'm gonna paste. So now we've copied and pasted our values from our low cam table into the high cam as a starting point and now we can start to adjust some things. Now at 8,000 RPM, I'm gonna copy my values up to 9,000, 8,500, and then what I'm gonna do is just jump in here from roughly maybe nine or 12% throttle. I'm gonna increase this by 10%. I'm gonna give myself a little bit higher VE value in here because we are gonna be moving more airflow into the engine, so naturally, we should have a little bit higher value. So I'm gonna go in here, use my direct editing function and type in 1.1, asterisk. That's gonna raise my values up by roughly 10%. So now I have something populated in here that gives me a good starting point that we're gonna to have to adjust, but it's going to be much closer to getting the engine calibrated as a, again, as a starting point. We don't wanna have the VE values being the exact same thing as low cam because it's likely to run lean 
because we are moving more airflow into the engine, the VE values naturally should be higher. Okay, so now that we've populated our table here, I'm gonna to go to file and then I'm gonna go here to save file as, and I'm just gonna go and save it into the project folder as my watt tuning VTEC. So I have this as a file name. Okay, let's give that a second here to go ahead and save. Now the next thing is gonna be considering our ignition table, our spark timing tables. Ignition table one is for low cam, ignition table two is for high cam. That's how we have it set up on the Z axis to configure between the two tables, just like our main VE table. Now, because we've dialed everything in here on our low cam, we've dialed in part throttle at roughly 20 to 35, 36 degrees here, wide open throttle, we're approximately 24 degrees. We're gonna find that we can carry a lot of what we found on the low cam to the high cam as a starting point. And then generally speaking, we can usually run another two, three degrees advance on high cam compared to low cam. We're only gonna do that once we know that the knock sensor is showing that there's no knock activity if we're trying to actually increase the spark timing and we have went up and we went through and set up our knock sensitivity tables already. We know the knock control's armed. We're gonna be looking at that throughout the calibration process and using that to guide us in what we can actually get away with in our spark timing table two here. But what we need to do is copy the spark timing table one into table two, but let's go flip over here to table two. Just like we have to re redo our axes under our table, I'm gonna start my breakpoint axis at 25 and extend it out to 9,000, and then we'll import that data into the table. Let's click A, and we're gonna go in here and start to delete our points. So we're just gonna delete these values in here, and delete, and delete again, and again, we're gonna start it at 25. And I'm gonna extend the table out to 9,000. That's the maximum RPM I'm gonna anticipate spinning the engine to ever. And let's click yes. Now, what we can do is flip back into table one, go from 2,500 to 8,000, copy. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.